Well, good morning. Just want to welcome you here to Cedar Hill. I know that things look a little bit different this morning, but we want to say thank you for joining in and worshiping here with us at uh, Cedar Hill Baptist Church. One question that I've received this past week, what does church look like moving forward for us? Well, I will tell you this, that we're not meeting here in person uh, until further notice. Uh, we will be communicating with you through Facebook and our, our website, as you see here. Uh, you can find us on there. Also, we have our one call system that we have for all of our church members. Just want to let you know that, and, and we will uh, continue to touch base with you uh, through that. Uh, you also, this, past, this next week coming up, you will be able to see some devotionals come up on, on our Facebook and website that we're going to try to stay connected. One thing that me and Pastor Ronnie have been talking about is how can we stay connected with our church family through this difficult time. So we're trying our best just to come up with some things uh, to make sure that we stay connected with one another. Also, with saying that um, on our Facebook and also on our website, you'll be able to find um, a word from our pastor or his pastor passage that is always there in the bulletin on Sunday morning. So you'll be able to find that and see what, what the Lord has laid on his heart. So just keep that in, in mind. Also, one other thing that I want to mention to you is that Angie, our secretary here at Cedar Hill, and myself, we will be in the office. Uh, and if you need anything... Uh, please don't hesitate to call. Let us know. I'll be available if I need to do anything for you. Um, just uh, want to let you know. So we will be around. The church office is going to be open. Um, so just keep that in mind. So what does today look like? This morning as we're sitting here worshiping one another, what does it look like? Well, today we want you to sing along with us. We, we want you to sing along as Eric leads us in worship, and we want us to be able to enjoy worship. And that's our main thing. I want you to take notes. I want you to follow along with me as, as, we, as I preach. And also you'll be able to see my outline up on our Facebook page and also on our website. So as you look for this, as you uh, watch us, just remember that you can find some notes and, and my outline on the Facebook. main thing we want you to do this morning is to worship the Lord. And with saying all that, I'm going to ask Eric if he'll come and, and lead us in a couple of hymns. Eric? Good morning, church. I hope everyone is having a good day so far. If you would, join me in singing. He keeps me singing. And there's within my heart Whisper sweet and low, fear not, I am with thee, peace be still, in all of life's ebb and flow, Jesus, 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 sweetest name. slumbering chords again. Jesus, 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 sweetest name I know, fills my every longing, keeps me singing as I go. Soon he's coming back to welcome me, far beyond the starry sky. I shall wing my flight to worlds unknown. I shall reign with him on high. Jesus, 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 sweetest name I know. Fills my every longing, keeps me singing as I go. Now if you would join me in singing, Because He Lives. I'm 
intercessory prayer time and I just want you at the, at whatever you're doing I just want you to pause right now and just go to the Lord in prayer and before we go to the Lord in prayer I just want you to think about everything that has transpired this past week and think about how you have seen God work in this listen I know that many of you that are watching you're just uh, you're you're scared like the rest of us the fear of the unknown but I can assure you today I can assure you today that Jesus Christ he's in control and he knows exactly what's going on. So I just want to pray over you. I want to pray over your week and pray over the things that, that you might be facing. And what, pray for our president and pray for our, our leaders, our Tennessee Baptist president as well. So let's go to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, Lord, we, we thank you. We thank you for who you are. Lord, we thank you for sending your Son who suffered, bled, and died on the cross for our sins. Lord, we, we know that this epidemic that, that we're seeing, this pandemic that we have, Lord, that it didn't, it, didn't, it didn't catch you by surprise. Lord, you knew exactly what was going to happen. Lord, our prayer is, is that people will turn to you. People will listen to you like never before. Lord, that they will not run from you, but they'll run to you. God, we pray for President Trump as he uh, just uh, tries to, to get wisdom and guidance, seeks guidance, Lord, and, and the right information that will be put in front of him to know how to take care of the situation that we're dealing with. Lord, we pray for uh, just the Southern Baptist Convention and, and what, it, what it means to so many people. And Lord, I pray for wisdom and guidance in, in, the, in the future for us. And Lord, we pray that as well for... Uh, our Tennessee Baptist Convention Board and Brother Randy Davis, Lord, that we, you would just give him guidance in, in what to do. So, Lord, we come to you this morning. We're just thanking you for another day. 
Lord, I pray that, that we will remember that you haven't given us the spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. In order to pray, we'll cling to that. In Jesus' name, amen. You would join me now in singing, Oh, How I Love Jesus. There is a name I love to hear, I love to sing its worth. It sounds as music in my ear, the sweetest name on earth. Savior's love who died to set me free. It tells me of his precious blood, the sinner's perfect plea. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Because he first loved me. Amen. Thank you, Eric, for coming and, and leading us. I want to say thank you for the ones that come and getting our sound and audio and visual taken care of. And thank, Ms. thank you, Miss Kay, for coming and leading us and, as on the piano. Today we're going to be in Colossians. Colossians chapter 3 is where we will be this morning. Colossians chapter number 3. And as I put out a video this past week, I, I was talking about being uh, in the first few verses. And the more that I was talking and, and or, or excuse me, studying, I guess uh, the Lord just started revealing to me that, you know, set your mind on things above and, and, and verse number two is very important. But how do we do that? And I believe that he answers that question in verses 15 through 17. And I've entitled this message this morning, How to Stay Connected in the Midst of Disconnection. Listen, we are disconnected. We don't know what tomorrow holds. We don't know what the next second holds. And so how do we stay connected in the midst of disconnection? And that's found, I believe, in Colossians chapter 3, verses 15 through 17. Colossians 3, 15 through 17. Let me read it with you. Let's give reverence to God's Word and you pay attention to what God's Word is saying in Colossians chapter 3, verse 15 through 17. Notice what it says. It says, And let the peace of God rule in your hearts, to which also you were called in one body, and be thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with the grace in your hearts to the Lord. And then verse 17, one that I want to be a, very, a big encouragement to you today. Verse 17, And whatever you do, in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through Him. Whatever we do today, whatever tomorrow you, whatever you face tomorrow, do it in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and give Him 
thanks during that. I know that many of you know what dead spots are when you're talking on your cell phone. With technology and everything, it's getting a little bit better that we don't have that many dead spots. But I know that when I was younger, that I was driving an hour back and forth from work every day. And, and I would talk to a lot of people on my way home. And I know you're thinking to yourself, you know, Brian, you shouldn't be talking on your cell phone. Uh, while you're going down the road and just know that I did have a Bluetooth e earpiece and that's what I would try to use most of the time. But, but as I would travel on this same road every day, going back and forth to work, I knew that there were a few dead spots that I would lose service while driving along the Natchez Trace. I would let the people that I was talking to on the phone, I would always let them know that, say, listen, I'm fixing to go through a dead spot and I'll call you back when we can reconnect with one another. I started thinking to myself, there must be different ways that I can stay connected. I tried various things. I tried to stay con in order to stay connected, including buying a huge antenna that I put on a very small car. But no matter what I tried and whatever I, I tried to use, I always went through some dead areas. I always lost connection. Even though I tried to outsmart the situation, even though I tried to outsmart the situation, the circumstance, no matter what I tried, I always lost connection. Eventually, I saw that the only way that I was going to stay connected was by avoiding some areas and, or going a different route. You see, it's the same thing in our spiritual life as well. No matter what we try to do, Unless we avoid certain places, unless we avoid certain people, and unless we avoid certain situations, then we will always become disconnected with the church, and more importantly, with Jesus Himself. The question that I want to propose to you or well, the answer I want to, want to give you is, how can we stay connected to Jesus Christ? The answer to how to stay connected in the midst of disconnection is very simple. Choosing who is going to be in control is how we avoid becoming disconnected from Jesus Christ. We have to choose to allow Jesus Christ to be in control. If we're not careful during this present time, we can become easily disconnected from Christ in our everyday walk with Jesus Christ if we're not careful. It can happen because we are facing this coronavirus. It can happen because of what we're hearing and so on and so forth. And it can be very easily become disconnected in everything that we're doing. So the question is, how can I stay connected in the midst of all this disconnection? Well, three things that I want to give you. You can find this on our website. You can find this on Facebook. Three things I want to go ahead and give you today. The first one is, how do I stay connected in the midst of disconnection? The first thing is this, is you have to decide who is going to be in charge today. You have to decide what you're going to believe and what you're going to listen to. You have to decide who is going to be in charge today. But not only that is, you have to decide who are you going to communicate with today. Are you going to talk to Jesus Christ? Are you going to be in connect, communication with Him? And then the last one is, you have to decide who are you going to celebrate today. The first one that we see right here in our text today in Colossians chapter 3 verses 15 through 17 we see that you have to decide who is going to be in charge today if you want to stay connected in the midst of disconnection of everything that's going on today you have to decide who is going to be in charge today verse number 15 tells us that it says let the peace of God rule in your hearts Paul illustrates that unless we give over the reins to Christ by allowing Him to be in control 
of our lives, then we are deciding to trust in the chaos of this world instead of trusting in Jesus Christ. If we decide that we're not going to allow the the peace of God to rule in our heart, we're saying, listen, I want to be in control, and I'm going to be in control, and I'm going to trust in this chaos that is around me instead of trusting in Jesus Christ. But not only does he tell us that he let the peace of God rule in our heart, he takes it a little bit further. He says, let the peace of God rule in our heart. What does that mean? You see, let the peace of God, that statement is, is in the original language is in the present tense. It means right now. It means, what am I going to do right now? Let the peace of God is in the present tense. And then he says, rule in your heart. Rule in your heart takes on the meaning of an umpire or a referee, or a judge, and etc. So what we have in this text, when we decide who's going to be in charge today, let the peace of God rule in your heart. At this present time, we have to decide for, to allow Jesus Christ to be the umpire, the referee of our life. Are you going to allow Fox News, CNN, all these other news stations to be the to rule in your heart, to be the umpire, to be the judge, to be the referee. Are you going to trust in that today? Are you going to decide for that to be in charge today instead of Jesus Christ? So in other words, this verse is stating that we have to decide if we're going to allow the peace of God to be the umpire of our life of this present time. Tomorrow, when you wake up on Monday morning, You have to decide when you turn that TV on. You have to decide at that present time tomorrow morning. Am I going to allow God to be the umpire of my life? Think about an umpire or a referee. Sometimes they make calls we don't like. Sometimes we think that they miss calls. Don't we? But guess what? Nine times out of ten, nine times out of ten, that call stands. That call stands. Sometimes in our life, the umpire, the referee, which I'm talking about God, makes some calls that we don't like. But reality is, the call still stands. The call still stands. Have you ever thought about what would happen if there were no referees or umpires at some of these sporting events? Have you ever thought about that? I want you to think about that for a second. The ultimate, because the reason I say that is, you see, the ultimate job of the umpire is to control the chaos that comes during the game. And in our text today, if we remember everything about, we have to decide who's going to be in charge today. If we think about that, according to our text, Jesus Christ is, a, is saying, or, or the Apostle Paul is stating about Jesus Christ, he's saying, when you allow me, when you allow Jesus Christ to be the umpire, the referee of your life, the number one job, It's not for for God, for Jesus Christ as the umpire of our life. His number one job is not to make the calls that we like, but to make the calls that help bring peace to our life. He ends verse 15 by saying, And be thankful. Why is this so important? I hope that you are thankful that you have Christ as the umpire of our life. In your corner. Sometimes he's going to make some calls that we don't like. But he's doing it. He's doing it for our benefit. If there has ever been a time in my lifetime, and I'm just 35 years old, if there's ever been a time in my lifetime that we need the peace of God ruling in our hearts, It has to be today. With all the chaos and turmoil that's around. If there's ever been a time that we need to answer this question of how can can I stay connected in the midst of disconnection, it has to go back to we have to decide who is going to be in charge today. 
Who is going to be in charge today? Who is going to be the umpire? Who's going to be the judge of this present time? But not only do we see that we have to understand that decide who is going to be in charge today, the second thing is we have to decide who are, we, who are you going to communicate with today. Verse 16 tells us this. He says, Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. You see, we have to decide who you're going to communicate with today. Just like verse 15, verse 16 starts out by saying, Let thee, let the peace of God, and then in verse 16 it says, Let the word of God. In verse 16 he says, Let the, let the word of God, or let the word of Christ dwell in you. The beautiful thing about this, this also means at this present time, the Word of Christ will dwell in your heart. At this present time, you have to decide, is Jesus Christ going to rule in my heart? Is He going to dwell in our heart? This word, not only does this mean, this word means to dwell in us, but as we see this verse unfold, to dwell in you richly, in, in wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with the grace in your hearts. What does this mean? It means at the present time, but if we cluster all this together, we, we see that this word means message. It means message. This part, talk, this part of the scripture talks about being a message. The word means message. So it, at this present time, it means that we have to allow God to proclaim His message through us as it dwells in us. The only way that this is possible, possible is by being in communication with Him daily. It's communicating with Christ even when we don't need anything from Him. You see this phrase, dwell richly in verse 16. You see, it is linked together and it means to be, to be placed permanently somewhere where it can thrive. At this present time, he's wanting to place his word in you where you can thrive and, it, and you might be quarantined in your own house, but he's wanting you to just be filled with his word and he's wanting you to be able to be in communication with him right now for this present time for something that we don't even see and something we don't even understand. But he wants you to be in communication with you and allow that Word of God to dwell in you richly. He's wanting to, to thrive in you. You might think that how can the world, can this world, this Word thrive in me when I'm quarantined to my house? Let me tell you something. Some of the times that Jesus Christ speaks to you the most is during those times of isolation. Think about the life of Moses. Think about other people. Think about Daniel. Think about all of these men that were isolated in certain situations and that's when God spoke to them like never before. You see this word or this phrase, dwell richly in verse 16, is linked together and it means to be placed permanently somewhere where it can thrive. I want you to think about us putting a seed in fertile soil. That's what he's talking about. He's wanting, he's wanting to put that, the seed, His Word in you in, in such a fertile soil that it just thrives like never before. But I love verse 16 because Paul takes it a step further as he's talking to the people of Colossae. He says this. He wants our, our communication with God to thrive where it can benefit others. Did you notice that? It says, let the Word of God dwell in you richly, teaching and admonishing what? One another. It's not just for you, but it's for one another. In psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with the grace in your hearts to the Lord. Verse 16 shows us that Christ desires for us to be in communication with Him, where that communication with Him can benefit others. We'll 
benefit others. Have you ever, and it's like this, have you ever been on the phone with someone and throughout the conversation that you're talking to them, they say something like this, I just wanted to hear your voice. Every time that I talk to our pastor on the phone throughout the week, throughout our conversation, that's one thing that he always says to me. He, he always says, Brian, I just wanted to hear your voice, brother. It just makes you feel good when you hear that voice on the other end of the phone. Whoever it is, you know what I'm talking about. That's what Christ is wanting us to do. He is just wanting us to come and to talk to Him. He's just wanting to hear our voice. He's wanting us to, to say, I just wanted to hear your voice, Brian. And in return, the reason that he's doing that is because he is saying, listen, I want to do this where teach one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with the grace in your hearts to the Lord. Listen, that has to come from within, in our hearts to the Lord. Not only does he tell us right here in verse 16 that we have to decide who we're going to communicate with today, but the last thing this morning that I want to leave with you is this. It's all about decisions, guys. Whatever you're doing, wherever you are, if you're still in bed this morning watching this, if you're, if you're in the living room around with your kids and your family, if you're around with some friends, I hope less than ten. That's what they're telling us. The last thing that you have to decide is this. It's very simple. You see, you have to decide... Who are you going to celebrate today? As tough as it is, who are you going to celebrate today? What do you mean? Well, verse number 17 is very clear in this. He says, And whatever you do in word or in deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, giving thanks to God the Father through Him. You see, Paul concludes right here this section in chapter number 3 at this present time once again. He's telling us that I hope you decide to live for Christ today. Verse 17 takes care of itself if we allow God to be in control today and we decide that we're going to be in communication with Him today, in word or in deed. Paul is stating that our action and words will be the determining factor in what we decide to live for today. So the question that I want to give you today, as I want to leave you this morning, is what are you going to celebrate today? Are you going to celebrate today saying, listen, even though I'm in isolation, even though I don't know what tomorrow holds, even though you might be running out of toilet paper at your house this morning, I understand that you got to celebrate today. You are celebrating Jesus Christ. Because it tells us in verse 17, whatever we do in word or in deed, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, giving Him thanks through God the Father. If you take care of, I'm going to allow Him to be in charge today. I'm going to be in communication with Him today. Listen, that third point. Who am I going to celebrate today? It comes natural. It's easy. It's nothing to it. You can close your Bibles this morning. This past week, as, as the week unfolded, got a phone call from someone. And I uh, was talking to this, this man that, that lives out of state. And he started sharing with me some of the things that, and I consider him a, a friend, an acquaintance. Little did I know that he, he was in, been in and out of rehab over the last year. He told me over this past weekend that, that he went this past weekend, not this weekend that we're in now, but weekend before last, that, that he went to, he went to a, a Christian camp. It's called the Emmaus Walk. He told me that last, week, last weekend people was telling him to use his own judgment in attending this camp. Should he attend or shouldn't he attend? Should not attend. He said that he decided to go 
because at the time there were no cases known in, in, in the part of the state that he lived in. He said, I went and, and um, I wrote him a letter just because his mother asked me if I would, and I said, I'd, I'd be glad to. He went on to tell me this, that through this conversation that I had with him, that he asked Jesus Christ into his heart. You just have to know, church, what this guy's went through the last, few, last couple years. Some of the conversations that I've had with him, he said, I'm calling you today because there were many times that I told you no when I tried to present the gospel to him. When I tried to present salvation to him, he would always tell me no. He said, Brian, I'm calling you today just to tell you thankful, thank you for everything you've done for me. He said, I apologize for saying no, but I said, look, there's nothing to apologize about, brother. The, you know, the main thing is you got this nailed down. And I was almost in tears in my office as he was telling all this to me, and, and I'm telling you, it was just a lot of chaos around us um, around this, this week and a lot of questions that needed to be answered. And I tell you, it couldn't have came at a better time, this, this conversation. I, I was in my office, and, and I just I got up from where I was, and I had to share it with somebody. I ran into Angie's office, and I said, Listen, I need to share something with you. I know you don't know anything about this situation. And I told her everything that went on. And I just told her, I said, I said, Angie, you know what? The God that I serve, He just reminds us, and He's reminded me, that you know what? I serve a God that's bigger than the coronavirus. I still, I serve a God that in the midst of everything that we're dealing with, that He is still saving people from hell. This morning as we close, I want you to know, no matter where you are, what you're doing, maybe you've been struggling with your salvation, and maybe you feel like you're disconnected and you don't have, you don't have anywhere to turn, let me tell you where you can turn. It's to Jesus Christ. Let the Word of God dwell in you richly. Whatever we do, do for the glory of God. Listen, this morning maybe you need, need to know Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. If you've never asked Jesus Christ into your heart, I want to give you that opportunity right now. And the only thing that you have to do is, is say something similar like this. Jesus, I'm a sinner. I want you to come into my heart and to save me. Thank you, Jesus, for coming into my heart and saving me. Listen, if you pray that prayer, I would love for you to reach out to me. Reach out to our church and let us know that you've made that profession of faith. I'd love for you to follow it up with believer's baptism or anything like that. But I would love just for you to know. Let us know that you made this decision to follow him. Listen, you serve a God. And there is a God that is bigger than anything that we face. He is bigger than this coronavirus. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, Lord, we just thank you today for who you are who you're going to be for us in the future. Lord, I pray today that whatever we do, in word or in deed, Lord, we'll do it all for the glory of God. God, I, I thank you for stories like I shared today, that you are still in the saving business. And Lord, I pray that others will examine their heart and to see where they stand with you. And God, I pray that they'll come to know you. They're in need of a Savior. Lord, we thank you. We love you. In spite of everything that's going on, Lord, I pray that you'll give us the peace to understand that you're still in control. In Jesus' name, amen.